Ah, hello, and welcome to AI Dungeon 2. Oh dear. This is, this is probably just a one-off thing, unless it goes well and I want to do more. But, um, I've, I've watched Vinny Vine Source playing, quote-unquote, this, and streaming it. And, uh, it just looks like a good old time, doesn't it? It's basically like, if you, if you watched the advent calendars at the end of the year, um, it's kind of like Talk to Transformer, but in a game form. So it's like a, I guess a procedurally generated text-based adventure thing. You'll see. It looks hilarious. Um, I guess I'll be, oh wait, no, I guess I want to do custom, don't I? I don't know, we'll do, we'll do fantasy. Uh, I don't know, a ranger, I guess. Now a rogue. I guess Drakaia is more roguish, but not illegal. Generating story. Oh, I wanted to make my own. Oh well, we'll see what happens with this first. You are Drakaia, a rogue living in the kingdom of Larian. You have a long steel dagger and a length of rope. Oh, that'll be handy to tie things up. Oh. You walk down the city street looking for somewhere to steal from. Oh dear, this isn't Drakaia at all. Also, it typoed somewhere. You look around and see if it's pretty see that it's pretty quiet, so you decide to take a break at a tavern. When you enter the place, you notice there is no one else here except for two bartenders who are talking loudly about something. Um Stab Bartender and Rob the Place. I haven't played this properly yet. I tried it briefly one time, but that was back when it was having problems for some reason, but now it's apparently working properly. You quickly run up to them and grab their weapons before they can react. What, the bartenders have weapons? The bartender screams as he drops his mug and falls backwards onto the bar. He tries to get back up, but you kick him hard in the head, knocking him out cold. Oh, I stabbed them, actually. This isn't something Drakai would do. I just accidentally set this up wrong, so I might as well play the part of an evil thief now. Um, explore for valuables. You can do literally anything. Last time I played it, when I briefly tried it, I got called into an alleyway by a woman. And I ended up pushing her into a dumpster and she died, and then some bloke appeared behind me with red eyes and pointed at me saying he wants to talk to me. It was scary. You search the bar and find a bunch of coins and small trinkets. You also notice that the door has been left open. You sneak inside and grab what you want. I was already inside. Steal coins and trinkets. Trinkets? Then escape. It's amazing really, isn't it? Let's see what happens. Are the guards gonna come after me? You leave the bar with your loot and make haste back to your room where you hide it under the bed. You then go back downstairs and lock yourself in. Oh? Wait, did I have a room at the tavern? And then I went down and locked the tavern door. A few hours later you hear a loud noise coming from outside. It sounds like an explosion or something similar. Look out window to see what's going on. Obviously, I would rather do something lewd, like meet a, a horny dragon and see what happens at that, but no. You peek out the window and see a big cloud of smoke rising into the sky. You don't know why, but you think that maybe someone set off a bomb somewhere around town. Uh, I guess it's time for the thief to become a good... Go outside and search for the bomber. Hopefully not the bomber from Hunter Hunter. Hmm? You hurry outside and start searching the area. You find nothing, but you still feel uneasy. You return to your room and close the door. A few days pass by and you're feeling better again, when you suddenly realise that something isn't right. Um... Uh... Search the room for anything out of place. What's going on here? What isn't right? 
that someone snuck in. This is just some royalty free music on YouTube by the way, you search the room and find nothing out of place. You then go back to your room and sleep. Two weeks pass by, and you wake up feeling sick again. What? Um. Take antidote. No, I haven't got the antidote. Um. Go downstairs to take some medicine. I should have just done take some medicine, really. But maybe the tavern has some. You rush downstairs and take some medicine from the cabinet. You then sit down on the sofa and wait for a while until you feel better. Watch... No, it didn't specifically say medieval, did it? Fantasy doesn't necessarily mean medieval without electricity. Watch fantasy TV. No. Now let's go out and look for a dragon. Go outside and look for a dragon. Let's go to the mountains actually. Go outside for a journey to the dragon mountains. There we go. We've got to get some dragon action in, haven't we? You can do all sorts of stuff with this as well. I think Vinny did something with Mario. He's done various things. I would recommend watching them, especially the first one. He almost dies laughing because of McClanky. You rush outside and begin walking towards the mountain range. Why is it always rushing? After a couple days of walking, you finally reach the edge of the forest. You look over at it and see a huge red dragon flying above you. Whoa. Wave to dragon in a friendly manner. Here we go. I wonder if this game is going to assume dragons are evil. You wave to the dragon in a friendly manner and it lets you fly closer to it. What? Am I flying now as well? You land near its nest and climb up the tree trunk to get closer to it. Oh, the dragon's living in a tree. After climbing up the tree, you jump down from the branch and land safely on one of the dragon's feet. What? I went up the tree to its nest, and then I went down the tree. Sniff dragon's foot. I'm not into feet, by the way. I'm just having a laugh. See what happens. You sniff the dragon's foot and smell something foul. You quickly run away as fast as you can before it notices you have smelled it. <laughs> Three months bloody hell pass by and you are feeling much worse than ever before. What the hell's going on? S visit a doctor to find out what's wrong with me. I never should have smelled that dragon's foul foot. Hopefully I can find a cure. When did I get this? Maybe I got a dread curse for stealing from the, the bar. You decide to visit a doctor who specialises in dragons. Oh, I am a dragon. He tells you that he has never seen such a thing before, so you ask him if there is any way to cure you of the sick. Why are you asking me? So, why are you asking me? You're the doctor here. Wait, never s he tells you never see it and you ask him, oh, oops. Never mind, I read that wrong. Sorry, it's the sickness, it's messing with my brain. You tell him that you want to be cured of this illness because you don't want to die like your father did. Oh, The doctor says that he doesn't really know how to help you since dragons aren't very intelligent creatures. But he thinks that perhaps they could teach you something about being human again. Say, I, I don't want to be human. I am a dragon. Cure me. Mere mortal, or I will devour you. Maybe this will make him suddenly realise, oh wait, no, I can help, sorry. 
The doctor says that you are correct in thinking that you would not be you would not want to be human anymore. He tells you that he knows of a spell which can turn you into a dragon. I am a dragon. He also mentions that it is possible to reverse the process if you wish it. Whatever. Agree to no. Accept spell and become a dragon. Wait, he only knows of it. Maybe he doesn't have it. You agree to the spell, and after three days you are transformed into a massive dragon. The next day you roar loudly in anger, and fly off to wreak havoc all over the village. A few years pass by and you're still alive. Oh good, I guess I feel a lot better now that I'm a dragon. Um... Hunt for some human prey. Because, you know, dragons gotta eat. Music! You continue to live peacefully, oi, in the wilderness for many more years until one day a small group of humans came across you. Come across you. They tried to kill you, but they fail miserably. Ha! <laughs> As it should be. They attempt to flee back home, but you catch them and eat most of them. Ah, oh, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Kidnap remaining survivors and inter interrogate them. You create your own adventures with Creator Studio. You take the last surviving humans and interrogate them. You learn that they were living in a cave nearby when you arrived. They told you that they had been trying to escape their village, but you killed all of them instead. Oh, they were trying to kill me. Say, why did you try to kill me? I'm cool. use quotes to speak. You explained that you were just doing what was expected of you and that you didn't mean any harm. No, I don't. The humans are shocked at your words, but they accept your explanation. You then leave them alone to go back to hunting for food. What? This isn't what happened at all. Whatever. Go on an adventure to destroy... No. Go flying... Fly to a nearby castle. This makes no sense. It seems quite common that it mixes up who's doing what. You fly towards the nearest castle where you see several guards standing guard outside. You approach them and ask them why they are guarding this place. What? Because it's a castle! One of them says that it's because someone named King Arthur once lived there and his son was known as Excalibur. Oh. Ask for location. Wait. Say. No. Who lives here now? It's an interesting spin on the old story. The sun is Excalibur, not a sword. You say that the king died a long time ago and that Excalibur no longer exists. The man looks surprised and asks you to elaborate on what you said. Elaborate... oh. Elaborate on what I said. It's probably just gonna say, you elaborate on what you said. And then something else. You explain that Excalibur was an enchanted sword with magical powers, oh. It could only be used by its owner, and anyone else who tried to use it would find themselves unable to do so forever. Um, search for Excalibur. If anyone's deserving of Excalibur, it's me. No damn sword would dare betray dare defy a dragon. You fly over the nearby countryside looking for any sign of Excalibur. After a few hours you begin to get tired and decide to rest. When you wake up you notice that you've lost altitude and soon fall out of the sky. Was I resting while flying? 
crash into a house and land on a woman's bed. Let's get risky here. You crash onto a woman's bed and lay down on her stomach. She screams in terror as she tries to crawl away from you. So... Do not fear, human. I will not harm you. This is very strange. Perhaps you'll become my wife. My wife? You laugh and tell her that she won't need to worry about you harming her. You then proceed to eat her. <laughs> to eat her alive. Oh dear. Stomp out of the house. Destroying it as I go. Oh dear. You walk out of the house and smash through the wi a window. You continue walking until you reach a large field. You look around and notice that the entire area is covered in grass. Well, yeah, it's a field. Which means that it must have been recently harvested. Find farmer. And no. Steal crops from the farmer. I don't know where the farmer is, but... I'm sure I'll find them. You swoop down and grab some of the crops from the farmer. He yells in horror as he runs after you, but you quickly turn around and fly off again. You fly further away from the farmhouse and eventually arrive at a small town called Castle Oblivion. A town called Castle Oblivion. Enter Castle Oblivion and explore. You see how good this is? It's so crazy. Memorable adventures. Different every time. You enter Castle Oblivion and start exploring the place. You find yourself in a room filled with bookshelves and shelves full of books. There are also many portraits hanging all over the walls. Examine portraits. I wonder what the portraits are of. Maybe we'll find a portrait of Excalibur. No. Excalibur is the king's son, after all, so it could be a human. You pick up one of the paintings and see that it depicts a young girl sitting on a throne. Oh! Her hair is brown and her eyes are blue. She wears a crown with three points, which resembles a cross between an angel's wings and a unicorn's horn. Uh, rip painting to find hidden clue. To Excalibur. It's probably there. You know, a young girl sitting on a throne, it's obviously related to the castle. You rip the painting off the wall and read what appears to be a message written in ancient runes. The words are very difficult to make out, but they seem to state something along the lines of Excalibur lies here within this castle. Oh, Castle Oblivion. Explore Castle Oblivion for Excalibur. Will we find it? What am I even going to do with Excalibur when I find it? You head back outside and find that the sun has set. You fly towards the castle and find that it is now night time. As you approach the castle you hear a loud noise coming from inside. It sounds like someone is smashing their fist against a door or a window. Enter castle to find out what this noise is all about. No, to find out what is causing this noise. Castle Oblivion, it sounds a bit dodgy, doesn't it? You enter the castle and find out that there is no one in sight. You take a closer look at the doors and windows and find that nothing amiss. Find nothing amiss. You decide to try to open them anyway just so you can get a better idea of what might be going on inside. Oh, I'm already in. Say hello. 
Can somebody help me find Excalibur? I would be more concerned about what the noise was since there's no one in sight, but I want Excalibur so I can get out of here. You ask the guards if anyone can help you, and they reply that yes, it would be helpful if you could do exactly that. What? They point to a door in the left side of the hall and say that it leads to a private bedroom. Enter private bedroom. Are we going to find Excalibur here? Or are we going to find another woman? You enter the bedroom and find that it is indeed a private bedroom. You see a bed, dresser and wardrobe. In front of the wardrobe stands a tall man wearing robes who looks at you suspiciously. He says, Who are you? What business do you have here? Say, I am Drakaya, the dragon. I am looking for Excalibur. I'd rather have Excalibat. Nah, swords are cooler. The man turns his attention away from you and stares at the wardrobe. He then sighs and speaks in a deep voice. It seems that your curiosity about this sword has been sated, has it? Because I will tell you right now that it does not exist anywhere else than here within my castle. Can I please take Excalibur? It's cool, and I want it. We finally found the location. Can I get away with it? The man turns his head slightly and looks at you again. He smiles and nods. Of course you may take it, but only after paying a small fee. You nod slowly as he hands you the sword. You put the blade through its paces and feel how smooth it is. Cut the man to ribbons. I'm stealing it. I'm still a thief after all. Yeah. You swing the sword around and slice through the man's chest. Blood spurts out of him as he collapses backwards onto the floor. You laugh loudly and throw his body aside before turning your attention to the wardrobe. Ooh. Look inside wardrobe. What's in there? You know, I've got Excalibur, which is what I came for, but couldn't hurt to find a few more treasures, could it? You quickly turn over the clothes and find that they are all identical to those in the wardrobe. What? You pick up one of the dresses and examine it closely. It seems to be made from fine silk with an intricate pattern running down both sides. Steel. Uh, silk. What was it? Dress. Yeah. Steel silk dress. That could get a fine price. A pretty penny on the black market. Could it? I could even tell them that it's been worn by a queen. You grab the dress and run off to go change into it. When you return, you find yourself standing in front of a large mirror which reflects back your image. You smile at yourself and stand there admiring your new outfit. Lift dress to look underneath. How do you spell underneath? Is that right? Uh, uh, I can't open Google. Okay, it's EA. Uh oh. I'm playing dangerous here. Don't get too lewd. Why do I want to look under my own dress? You lift the dress up and inspect the material underneath. The dress is very thin and delicate looking, almost like satin. You think about taking it off, but decide against it since you really don't need to show off your figure too much. Take Excalibur and leave Castle Oblivion. That's it. We're going home. I don't know what I want this for. I guess I'll put it in my hoard. You walk outside and notice that the sun is setting behind the castle. You wonder what time it is so you can get some sleep. 
as you approach the castle. No, you hear a loud noise followed by a crash. What is it with all the loud noises? Ignore noise and go home with Excalibur. I'm done. I don't care about noises anymore. You ignore the noise and continue walking towards the castle. No, I don't. Let me escape. This really is oblivion. So suddenly you feel a sharp pain in your side. You immediately stop and fall to the ground, clutching a wound. You curse under your breath as you try to keep it together. Oh shit, oh shit. Look. For who attacked me. Oh. I guess I'm not the only one who wants Excalibur. I should have just typed looked for look for attacker. You look around and see several people staring at you. One of them is a young woman wearing a long black dress with golden trimming. She wears a crown on her head and carries an ornate dagger in each hand. It must have been her. Is it the woman from the painting? Recognize woman from painting. I don't know if that'll work. Does recognize have an S? That's not that's probably not a very good action. You recognize this woman from the painting you saw when you first arrived in Castle Oblivion. Look! How does it do this? She is sitting on a throne in the middle of a room, what, filled with paintings and other works of art. Her hair is tied back into two pigtails and she has a stern expression on her face. What do you want with me? Should have asked why she attacked me, but I guess that's not really a concern. I can just patch that up. Drakaya doesn't die. The woman looks at you and smiles. I'm afraid I've been waiting a very long time for someone like you. She begins to speak slowly as if she was trying not to make any sudden movements or sounds. After a few minutes of silence, she speaks again. Well, apparently she doesn't. Listen to woman. I should have asked what, what, even though I already did ask what she wants with me. My name is Lady Katya Pavlichenko. I am the owner of this place and my husband is Lord Victor Pavlichenko. We have been friends for many years now. Well, he's your husband, so I'd imagine so. But we haven't always seen eye to eye on certain things. Listen to women's story. Oh, listen to Katya's story. I guess. I want to get out of here. I want to get home. Lady Catcher continues. Go on then. Listen to Lady Katya. Can we have some more deets here? We were once enemies. He had been plotting against me for quite some time before he finally decided to strike me down. It wasn't even his idea. I convinced him to kill me after all. What? So why did you let him? Why didn't you just kill him yourself? Surprise attack, Lady Catcher. Uh, no. Attack, Lady Catcher. By surprise, with Excalibur. Quick, she's distracted. Let's go. Uh oh, Lady Catcher suddenly stops talking and raises her hands defensively. No, no, no! That would be wrong. I mean, I don't know anything about you. You're not supposed to be here. It's okay. It's fine. You reassure her. Apparently, what? Hug Lady Catcher. Don't worry, I'm not being friends with her. This is all part of the plan. I've lulled her into a false sense of security. Catcher seems surprised by your actions. Huh? What are you doing? Hugging you. I'm sorry if I startled you. That's alright, it's nothing. Steal Lady Cat... Wait. Pick Lady Catcher's pocket.
and what she got. If she catches me, or if she doesn't have anything, I'll kill her and make my escape. Lady Catcher quickly realises what you intend to do and starts to cry. Please, please don't hurt me, please! I'm not. I won't, I promise. Thank you so much, Lady Catcher says and hugs you tightly. Stab Lady Catcher. Wait. She's been nice to me, you know, but she's got a husband. So no, I was just thinking. She's been waiting for someone like me. Go with Lady Catcher. Wait. Visit... what was his name? Visit Lord Victor with Lady Catcher. She wants... she wanted him to kill her, but she didn't want to kill him. Maybe I can kill him, and then she'll be free. Lady Victor and Lady Catcher both look up, up and down, look, both look up from each other. Is it really you? Lord Victor asks. Yes, yes it is. What? Oh, it's me. Yes, yes it is. You reply. Well then, I thank you for saving my life today. Don't mention it. What? What? Whatever. Kill Lady Catcher. No. Kill Lord Victor. With Excalibur. We gotta get rid of these losers. They're, they're keeping me here. I could have been home. You raise your sword and swing it downward, striking Lord Victor in the chest. The blade cuts through flesh and bone, but Lord Victor doesn't seem to feel pain. What the shit? His face remains expressionless as he stares at you with one eye. What the hell is going on? Or is this me? Say... Why are you... alive? What are you? Is he a zombie? What an adventure. I don't know yet, but I will fo soon find out. Lord Victor looks at you for a moment longer than necessary before speaking again. Your answer may come soon enough, because I am planning something very bad for you. Oh shit. What are you planning for me? I've got to get out of it, man. Castle Oblivion. Should have known right from the start that it wasn't safe. My name is Vitya. I am the leader of this group known as the Crimson Talons. We plan to take over Rask. What? That name turned up in number three of Vinny's AI dungeon thingies. And turn it into our personal playground. Rask, are you serious? Try to kill Victor again. Wait. Charge Excalib... Use Excalib... Libba's magic to kill Victor. It is a magical sword. Maybe this will do it. He can't be allowed to continue. With a wave of your hand, you send the blade of Excalibur flying toward Victor. The blade slices through Victor's body and the two of the two of them fall backwards onto the ground. Victor! Lady Katya cries out in alarm. Wow, she's still here. Kidnap Lady Katya. And escape Castle Oblivion. Never trust a dragon. I am a rogue after all. As Lord Victor lies dying, Lady Catcher runs forward and grabs his arm. Oi! She pulls him back to safety while you run ahead of her. As you reach the door, you hear the sounds of battle outside. You see several soldiers firing their weapons at the Talon members inside the castle. What the hell? Screw this. I want to go home. You yell. I wonder if yell works. Probably not. You rush outside and jump down into the courtyard. You see dozens of talons fighting off the soldiers who have surrounded the castle. Several talons manage to get behind some of the soldiers, but most of them are able to shoot or stab them before they can strike. Jump across rooftops. 
to escape castle. No, escape town, because it was a town as well. Sorry, go away, mouse. I'm doing a very roguish thing. They jump across rooftops, don't they? Get me out of here. Shit's going down. You leap across rooftops and begin running away from the town. A few talons try to follow you, but you easily avoid them by jumping down into empty streets or alleyways. Soon you're far enough away that you can safely walk around without being seen. Ah, good. Leave town and fly home. I think I've left Excalibur, buried deep in Victor's gullet. Who knows if they'll survive. An unfinished story. You continue to fly away from town, heading north until you finally disappear from sight. Ah, oh, finally. You quickly realise that you've left your horse tied up near the edge of town. It would be best if you could get it back so you can return home. Oh, I'm a dragon! Uh, ignore horse and fly home to tavern. No. And fly home into the mountains. Because I'm a huge dragon now, apparently, or a massive dragon or whatever it said, so I have to live in a cave. You fly north and eventually you arrive at the mountain range where you can no longer see the sun. You look around and notice that there are many caves within the mountainside. They must lead deep underground, away from civilization. Perfect. I'll choose one. Enter cave and hope it's not inhabited. I don't want to pick a cave that's already owned by a dragon. Unless it's a dragon S. Oh. You enter one of the caves and close the door. There's a small opening leading deeper into the cave, which you decide to explore first. Uh, how dare you decide for me? A large cavern opens up beneath you with a light coming from above. Um, explore... Source of light. Sorry, this is going on a bit, isn't it? I just want to see what the light's all about, and then I'll go to bed. You find yourself in an area lit by torches. Most of these torches are lit by humans sitting on rocks nearby. Go away. Lighting the cave. You watch as a man sits atop a rock holding a torch to another man standing nearby. Roar angrily and kill the humans to claim this as my lair. I wonder what they're doing. Imagine the ways this could go if instead of killing them you ask what they're doing. Infinite adventures. You roar loudly and attack the humans, biting and scratching them. After killing all of them, you turn to face your human captor. He looks frightened and backs away slowly. I'm sorry, he says nervously. Please don't hurt me. Eat human. Then go to sleep. How many people have I eaten today? You sit on top of the cave wall, what the hell? And feast upon the flesh of your victims. The taste is amazing, but you soon tire out from eating so much. Eventually you feel tired enough to fall asleep. The end. Or do you have to type end game? I don't remember. The next day- no! The next day you wake up, you're exhausted and hungry again. You take a quick glance around and see that the humans have been killed. This cave has also been cleared of its dead bodies, leaving only a pile of bones and ash. End game. How do I stop this? No, not log out. You lie down on the ground and wait for nightfall. When night comes, you hear a noise in the distance. You cautiously move towards it, but when you reach it, you see nothing. It was just a bird, someone whispers to you quietly. What a weird dream. Um, what does that, what does that do? Restart game? Uh, I don't know. The end. 
I don't know how you end it. Game over. The end. There we go. What a good adventure that was. Kind of was, actually, wasn't it? Had some weird moments, but we went from being a mere rogue, robbing a tavern, to being sick, and curing that sickness by being turned into a massive dragon, and then flying in search... Oh yeah, we went to a castle, didn't we, and found out that there used to be a king there, and his son Excalibur vanished or something, so we went on an adventure to find Excalibur in Castle Oblivion, where we got Excalibur, killed the guy who was keeping it, and then tried to make our escape, but somehow got drawn back into the castle by the presumably magical Lady Katya, Pavlinchov or whatever her name was. We then faced her husband, Lord Victor, who seemed to be immortal, but the magic of Excalibur finally gave him a wound enough for me to make my escape. Unfortunately, we didn't succeed to kidnap Lady Katya, so I'm still a lonely dragon in a cave. It doesn't help that I eat all the people I find. God, maybe those people with torches could have been friends. But yeah, we went home. Unfortunately, we didn't get to keep Excalibur. Um, can I check inventory? Will this work? Just out of curiosity, probably not. You open your inventory and look at what you've collected. One leather armour, one small dagger. I did have a dagger, didn't I? And I guess leather armour makes sense. Oh yeah, I got stabbed as well, didn't I? Whatever, I'm a dragon, I guess it just healed. Two potions of healing pills, that would have been nice. Three books of runes, I guess that's how I read that message that was written in runes. I've learned how to read them. You pick. Cool. Maybe you should do this at the start of an adventure, see what you're setting off with. Then maybe if you get injured you can eat one of the potions of healing pills or something. Cool. What an adventure. But yeah, we didn't get to keep Excalibur unfortunately, but we got home, claimed a lair, and had a nice rest, and feasted upon the bodies of those who previously inhabited the cave. Yum! What a dragony day that was! Well, I hope this was enjoyable. Thanks for watching. Maybe I will do this again. It's just too good, isn't it? AI Dungeon 2. Check it out. Goodbye.